and welcome to Catholic Current. I'm Mara Moser. This week we come to you from Louisville, Kentucky, where the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops has gathered for its 2024 Spring Plenary Assembly. Over the past couple of days, the bishops have spent time in prayer and fraternal dialogue with one another. Today is the first day of public sessions. We are also conscious of the situation of the migrants who seek a safe haven along our southern borders. The bishops in those dioceses try their best to respect the law, but also to respond to the divine law that speaks to us about care of the poor, the homeless, and the unborn. In an election year, our pleas will probably fall on deaf ears, but we cannot cease in our efforts to proclaim the gospel from the rooftops and to see if we cannot influence those in power, at the very least, to improve the conditions in the countries of origin so that migration is not seen as a necessity for life. We have all heard the Lord's comment, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. At the start of the meeting, the Apostolic Nuncio, Cardinal Christophe Pierre, delivered a message to the bishops of the United States. The Eucharistic processions that are going on right now and which will converge in, on Indianapolis next month are an outward symbol of what we want to happen on a spiritual level. We want people to turn to the Eucharistic Lord, to walk with him and to be led by him. We also want this to happen in the context of community. Our people need to experience that a journey with the Lord is also a journey with others who seek the Lord. That is this journey, that this journey is a true synod. The bishops also discussed the possible approval of a new pastoral framework for ministries with youth and young adults. We spoke with the chair of that committee, Bishop Robert Barron. Well, you know, I was at the synod in 2018, the International Synod about Young People. And then, of course, I read Christus Viva, the statement that came out from the Pope. So I've been following these issues for a long time, and I've been dealing in my own ministry a lot with people who live online, young people, young adults, etc. And I know disaffiliation is a major problem, and they've been leaving the churches, quite frankly, in droves. So a big part of my ministry has been trying to reach out to them. This document provides a framework for us just to think about this, how to approach young people in the most effective way. I can't think of a more pressing pastoral issue right now than that. So I, I hope it helps the bishops and their staffs and people that are involved in, in ministry to young people just to think about the issue more creatively. You know, look at the spiking numbers among young people in depression, anxiety, uh, suicidal ideation. Um, a generation, let's say since the new atheist time, around the year 2000, a generation's come of age many of whom believe there's no God, there's no purpose, uh, there's no objective value. Well, what does that give rise to? <laughs> I would say not deep happiness, but deep alienation. There's a lot of mental illness concerns among young people, and I think it is very much tied to the spiritual. There's a physical dimension to that, there's a psychological dimension to be sure. But I'm with Carl Jung, the great psychologist, who said at bottom, every psychological problem is a spiritual problem. I've always felt that's right. And so, you know, reconnecting young people to God, to the highest good, the deepest value, that's key to their, their mental health. Pray for us that we find, you know, the ways to guide our local churches to deal with these issues. I think we all feel, you know, the, the mental health, the suffering of our people, especially our young people, is a prime concern. So pray for us as we, uh, you know, seek to do this work. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Catholic Current. We'll see you again tomorrow as we bring you the final day of the Bishop's Spring Plenary Assembly.